Well, the gospel question, do you have the keys to the kingdom of heaven? You probably thought that was a rhetorical question. It wasn't. I got them. <laughs> so do you. You want to see my, my keys? <laughs> there they are. There's three of them, so... I'll explain what they are a little bit later. In 1967, there was a singing group called the Young Bloods, and they did a recording of a 1963 Chet Powers song entitled, Let's Get Together. I'm not going <laughs> to sing it, but I'll, I'll recite some of the lyrics. If you hear the song I sing, you must understand. You hold the key to love and fear all in your trembling hand. Just one key unlocks them both. It's there at your command. So hang on to those lyrics for a while and we'll return to them a bit later. How many of you have uh, keys to your house or your car in your pockets or your purses? Can you get them out? Okay. Take, take a good look at them. Okay. Hurry, hurry, hurry. <laughs> Bye. Father Gary's getting impatient. So, right. Okay, now just jangle them. Okay. But th that doesn't have anything to do with my homily. I just want to see. I just want to see what it sounded like. Okay. You, okay. So put them away now. Put them away. Okay. Don't be distracted. Okay. Well, in today's uh, gospel reading from Matthew, we hear Jesus talk about a set of keys, uh, keys to the kingdom of heaven. And he tells Peter and his successors that these keys are to be used both on earth and in heaven. And he says to them, whatever you declare bound on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you declare loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And if you're familiar with the papal flag, you'll see a, on the papal coat of arms that's on that flag, um, some cross keys. And that represents the Roman Catholic belief that Jesus gave Peter and his successors authority over jurisdiction in earth and heaven. Well, I meditated on that passage for a bit, and it occurs to me that there's something more personal and more local in that uh, passage and in those keys and that symbol than uh, just for the Bishop of Rome. And I wondered, could it be that in some way all of us are entrusted with the keys of the kingdom of heaven, as it reads in Matthew's Gospel. Well, to properly answer that question, we need to define our terms. What is the kingdom of heaven? What is a key? What is the function of a lock and a key? Well, there's two things that I would say about the kingdom of heaven. First, what is it? And second, who's there? So what is the kingdom of heaven? Is it a place? Well, I suppose it is in some sense because we do believe that our, it will be inhabited by our resurrected bodies and spirits all, all one with God. And the nature, though, of such a place is really beyond our natural sensory, five senses' ability to comprehend. But if you consult the Catechism of the Catholic Church, you'd find that our tradition tells us that the kingdom of God is more than just a supernatural place. It is that, but it's more than that. It says that it's a condition of, in quotes, eschatological glory. Well, it's way above my pay grade to explain what eschatological <laughs> glory means. Uh, so I'll just tell you something I can comprehend with my simple mind, and that's what St. Paul said about it. He, he, in his letter to the Romans, uh, he was commenting on the relative unimportance of the religious Jewish dietary rules and regulations. And this is in chapter 14, verse 17, Romans. And he says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of justice, peace, and the joy that is given in the Holy Spirit. Well, if you substitute the word love for joy in the Holy Spirit, you end up with the familiar gospel uh, principles of peace, justice, and love. The gospel values of peace, justice, and love. So it would seem that God's heavenly kingdom on earth is both a place and a condition of peace, justice, and love. And these three concepts are relational. They're relational terms that describe proper relationships 
between and among people. So how do we relate to one another in justice, in peace, and in love? Now as to the earthly membership of the kingdom of heaven who's there, we're all told in our baptisms that we are now, quote, heirs to the kingdom of heaven. So there we have the kingdom of heaven. Now let's look at the phenomenon of locks and keys here in this kingdom. Well, common sense and personal experience tells us that the key exists to keep something in and uh, uh, let something out. You know, we unlock the door to our cars to get in and we lock them up to keep car thieves out. Same with our houses and our offices, our dorm rooms, our file cabinets, and even passwords on our various computers. That's a pretty simple process. Lock something in, unlock it, let it out. Now, here's the hard part. As heirs to the kingdom of heaven, it logically follows that we too have been entrusted with the keys of that kingdom. And again, Jesus is saying to Peter, I will entrust to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you declare bound on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you declare loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven. That's a lot of responsibility. It is for Peter and his successors, and it is for all of us. And I think we all know and we realize that with privilege comes responsibility. With the privilege of driving a car comes the responsibility to drive according to the rules. And a promotion at work usually brings increased privileges, but almost certainly brings increased responsibilities. And if you think about it, I think many of us would like to have the privileges of the President of the United States, but few of us would want his responsibilities. So what does Jesus ask of us as he entrusts the keys of his kingdom to us? Well, these keys are the keys to his hall of justice, his temple of peace and his fortress of love. We have the responsibility of safeguarding these three pillars of the kingdom. The principles of justice must be kept under lock and key lest they be hijacked by those who would use law and regulation for their own selfish purposes as they trample on the just rights of the poor and the disenfranchised. And you're quite aware where it says, and what it says in scripture, that the Lord hears the cry of the poor, and so should we. In our social, economic, and political dealings, we must do what we can to keep justice safe from thief and hireling. In peace, in our marital and family relationships, in our friendships, and in our relationships with all our brothers and sisters throughout the world, should be considered so valuable that we do anything in our power to prevent it from being stolen away from us. And love. What can we say about love? Do we not all intuitively know in the depths of our being that love is as precious as life itself? That love is the foundation of all reality. And as St. John says, that God is love. So is not love something that should be nurtured, protected, and preserved above everything? When we let love be stolen from our hearts, we end up with nothing but hearts that are empty and hollow. Well, there will be multiple times in the coming week that all of us will use the keys that we carry in our pockets and purses. And perhaps as we use these keys, maybe we can think not only the privileges that come with those keys, but also the responsibilities. Open the door to your house, your apartment, your dorm room. What responsibilities do we have to those who reside therein? Open the door to your place of work or study. What responsibilities do we have to those who work there? And more importantly, to those whom we serve through the work that we do there. So as we use these keys made of metal, perhaps we can be aware of the keys that Jesus entrusted to us, the keys that open the doors to justice, to peace, to love. If you hear the song I sing, you must understand. You hold the key to love and fear, all in your trembling hand. And just one key unlocks them both, and it's there at your command. So we hold the key to love, we hold the key to justice, we hold the key to peace. 
And I can't tell you exactly how each of you should use these keys of the kingdom. I'm having a hard enough time, honestly, figuring that out myself. It's an individual thing, day in, day out, moment by moment, choice by choice. Yet Jesus does speak to us through our conscience and through our community. So we must learn to listen. And we should continually ask ourselves these questions in our daily lives. Do I act with justice? Do I love tenderly? Do I live peacefully?